in times like this, you say depression is real before COVID and during COVID it's heightened. Yeah. I think it's a time where I find my, I've really enjoyed the past few weeks because mm-hmm. my daughter and my father have been digging up the earth and building the rose garden. Mm-hmm. My grandfather had a cat and the cat just, my father, sorry, my kid's grandfather, the cat died. And today we rescued the kitten of the cat. We were like, what smells in the bush at the back? Mm-hmm. And we that the cat was either murdered by a dog or died oh. or whatever. And we all cried. We all had a moment. But what was beautiful was to look at the, the moment of a new kitten being brought into our home and mm-hmm. watching the kids run around with the kitten, wet the kitten, feed the kitten. I said, this is so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, like, I think it's therapy. So I think if you have an animal, you have a garden, you have something out there, nature is mm-hmm. therapeutic as a part of healing when you have anxiety, when you have depression, and people need to turn to it. And if mm-hmm. you have even urban farming, I cut the, the, the scallion, put it in a glass of water, wait yeah. for it to spring, cut the end of the lettuce, and put it in a, a, a little container of water, waiting to pick my own lettuce from the garden. Things I would never have, t- I would never have had time to I'm do. I'm struggling with the lettuce, though, truth be told, because really? it, it doesn't work for me. The scallion, yes, but the lettuce yes. pisses me off. Oh, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. But, but, but somebody's beating I have to read some of the comments to you because Trishana is saying, I wish I could get my kids to go outside. Um, Francine is drinking gin no, and tonic. No, so you pick them up and throw them outside. Just, just put them Who's outside. drinking gin and tonic? Francine. MJ is drinking margaritas. Um, Ooh. Who else is here? Oh, okay. Hold on. Oh, Carrie is having a juice box. <laughs> No, Carrie, you need to start shopping for wine as an in, as an essential um as an essential item in your grocery list. Empress, are you still there? Looks like she froze a little bit. Let's give it a moment. Hang on. We might have lost her for a second. In any case, guys, how are you doing in the comments? How is everybody doing while we while Empress probably is connecting again are you there how's everyone doing? <laughs> you're back i have the internet dropped in and out um um i guess she'd be connecting back soon how's everyone doing oh you're hiding in the bathroom da- dano dano <laughs> you're back and I'm back. Good. Dana is hiding in the bathroom. Um, and I understand that. Uh, Dana has children? Dana has yeah, children? Yeah. Yes. No, I, I so, hide in the bathroom a lot. <laughs> you have to. Let's be real. Let me tell you. I was on a Zoom and wine the other day with my girlfriends, and that is what you call healing and therapy. Uh-huh. And one of my girlfriends ran in the bathroom, you know, where I said, Are we in there? Oh, he looks up. She up there in her bathroom, like, Yeah. Yeah. She's like, yeah, and I said to her, listen, wherever you have to hide, if it's under your bed, <laughs> you have to, because guess what? We can't run and can't change what's natural. And it's mm-hmm. innate for children to run to us. We carry them for nine months, especially mm-hmm. the younger ones. Mm-hmm. Mommy, 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 mommy. Mm-hmm. We love that. But don't be afraid to pick them up and put them in and say, yeah. Some of us are afraid to say what we think and what we feel. And then I'm like, hubby, yeah. tonight, right now, I need you to just hold them. Or mm-hmm. throw them on him and run and hide. Mm-hmm. So you can have these moments. It's very important. And I mean, for, but for the moms that don't have that support at home, I mean, you whoa, know. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't even know what it's like. It's I, rough. I, I don't know what it's like to not have a partner at home. Whether mm-hmm. your partner loving or not. My, my, my loving, you know, we come and get my breakfast and I'll be done in something there. But it's not You're lucky. lucky. <laughs> Very lucky. Let me tell you, he can cook. I mean, you know, we have a typical relationship. Uh-huh. Healthy, but typical. Like, you know, you go up, you go down. It's like one day I love you. Today I'm like, I'm not trying to see you right now. But I can tell you, like, he's so supportive. And I love when 
their moments. I see him just with the kids having their time and then mm-hmm. I run and have my own little time. Mm-hmm. And, but it's not, we don't have a relationship where you can come and just say, hey, babe, mm-hmm. I got this at 8 o'clock. You can, but it's kind of like you got to massage them a little bit because it's mm-hmm. kind of like, yo, so, so, so all about me. You know, they don't fit anything I want to. <laughs> So you don't want to you, you don't want to feel like you're forcing you know 100 yeah. percent care on them and you're not spending any time. So I think it's about finding an order mm-hmm. in, in in time out. But you know I am very fortunate and I'm not gonna lie. I give thanks, but for the moms who don't have it, I don't know how you feel, and I am no expert on that. So mm-hmm. it's really important for me to hear from moms mm-hmm. who are alone with the children, mm-hmm. who all they say is mom, mom. Even though I'm at home with my husband, they only say mom, 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 mom. And you can get mom <laughs> doubt. Know. Like I, I'm, I get mom doubt quite a lot. And I'm like, when he was a lot younger, I'm like, okay, so we have to play the quiet game for a little bit. Let's play the quiet game. <laughs> Because it, it, it became it became very overwhelming. So in no, in the no, comments in the comments, Francine said it snowed in Canada again. What? Isn't oh, really? it like almost um, like wow? Is it summer? Spring summer? It's uh, it's definitely spring. Um right. and then but how, see she's a lockdown in the snow? Yeah, that's rough. And she says that her kid can't go outside and play for too long. And then, uh oh, Latoya said she had a panic attack and almost fainted. She was so stressed out. Mm. That's that's rough. You know, let yeah. me tell you something. Let me tell you something. One morning, I woke up talking about feeling stressed out the night before, and I decided I was going to get up. I'm not a big yoga girl. I used to be into Bikram yoga when I had my mm-hmm. second child, and it was a part of me trying to come back mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. And I went into Bikram yoga with a trainer doing other additional workout. The other morning I was so stressed out the night before the night before I was so stressed out. So I woke up early and I got my yoga mat and I went outside where I have a view and I laid down and turned on a random video yoga. And I sat there and Mm -hmm. I followed the poses and I did, and I had a cup, nice, fresh cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And I just felt so at peace. Everybody was sleeping. And I felt so alert, so in tune with myself. Mm -hmm. I felt alive again. And then all of a sudden, I hear a door open. Who is it? (laughs) The son, the eight-year-old. But what was cute about it was he came up and he grabbed the other yoga mat. And he he just lay down next to me. It was beautiful. And the two of us just went into a yoga session yeah. together. He's like, and then he said, well, Mommy, I'm cold. I'm like, Well, go get a blanket. Yeah. You know, it was nice and cool where we lived yeah. in the hills. Um, but that was so peaceful. And I felt rejuvenated. I felt mm-hmm. renewed. So when you're feeling stressed out, I think we have to stop and ask yourself, Why am I stressed out? Mm-hmm. Do I have worse off than others? Or am I better off than others? Mm-hmm. What can I do right now? To stop and breathe in and breathe out. What's your gratitude moment? Mm-hmm. I had that at the table today with my son and my daughter and my father. Yeah. I was like, Sippy, what are you grateful for? And she was like, I'm grateful for the food. I'm grateful for mommy. I'm grateful for grandpa. And, 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 and we had a moment of gratitude. Yeah. And it makes you feel better. It just makes you feel better. Yeah? I cry so every sometimes- morning right before I get up. I say a particular prayer and I have to do this. This is just my routine. And then I try and think about at least three things I'm grateful for. So that's my, my personal practice. And I have found that mindfulness in terms Mm -hmm. of meditation has definitely helped me where my anxiety level is. That's a, that's a good tip right there, Latoya, because it, it helps you to zone in on your thinking. And if you're a person like me who likes to ruminate, and you, mm. you will literally spiral into a thinking process, which is what leads to a panic attack many times. Um, this type of meditation, and it's not religious or anything like that, but it helps to ground it's just, you. It's being one with nature. It's like going, let me tell you, touching, watching a butterfly. There, there are certain, um, mm-hmm. just, just watch the wind blow. Watch the moon. Mm-hmm. Watch the butterfly. Watch the birds. Mm-hmm. 
watch a dog running on the road. Like sometimes when you just sit and be still, you become at peace. Yeah. You become at peace. And there's nothing wrong with admitting that, yeah, we're going crazy right now. But guess what? Yeah. What is your vice? Find your vice. Mm -hmm. Find your vice. Watch. I remember when my mom died, a psychologist, mm -hmm. Dr. Jama, who is a consultant that we work with at the children's home. And mm -hmm. my go to person sometimes. He doesn't even know it. But it's like I go to him with things he says. I like adapt it to my own life. Uh -huh. But he was like on the way dealing with my mom's uh, death. He's like, watch a funny movie. Mm -hmm. Watch a comedy. It takes your mind. It makes you laugh. It releases all the happy hormones, you know, and that will help to balance, or should I say, get rid of the stress that you're feeling at that time. At least temperate. Right. It helps to kind of whoo, quell it for just a little bit. Yes. But you brought up your mom, though. Um, having lost your mom, and I've, I've gone down that road as well in terms of not having my parents here, but how, how has that affected your coping or how has that affected how you're managing your family at this time? Because for me, if I had an issue or a crisis or a worry, the first person I would call or pick up the phone would be my mom. So how are you coping? I've, I've tried to pick up the phone a few times and call her. And yeah, her. I know how that is, yeah. I've done that. Um, how am I coping? You know, I'm a survivor. My mom, my mom has always encouraged me and always made me feel that I'm one of the strongest women in the world. She's mm -hmm. always told me how proud she was of me and how much she believed in me. So whenever I feel I'm going down, 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 mm -hmm. I can't remember her and how she would you know approach a situation mm -hmm. she could fix any problem she had an everything she was the glue mm -hmm. she was the healer she was the for our family that i be, really believe and hope that some of it rubbed off for me but sometimes when i feel i'm not coping and i don't know how i look to my mom and say hello she she fixed everything Mm -hmm. She gave me enough tools. She raised me right. You know, sometimes I sit in a little star flickers on my balcony at night, and that's mom and I having a conversation. And I hear her saying, how are you doing? And I'm like, mom, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then I start to tell her about dad, her husband, and how he's doing. And I start mm -hmm. to tell her about support and Kush and Steven and myself. And we have these conversations where I wonder, is she here? Um, so we do have a connection post mm -hmm. her physical death, her spirit mm -hmm. and, and, and her energy is still there. So we have conversations and that's what gives me life. And let me tell you something. You see, when we get down and out, which I go through it, I'm not going to pretend that I don't have my teary moments, which last for a good hour. Mm -hmm. and I'm screaming down the place and I'm frustrated. I get in the car and take a drive. Mm -hmm. I come back and then I get to what I need to do. And then I'm okay with saying to my children or my family, not right now. Not right now, daddy. Not right now, hubby. Right, right now, good. Not right now. I need my me, my me time. And I think the biggest survival tool or the best survival tool that women can have or juggling moms can have is to say, not right now with a beautiful smile mm -hmm. and get to what you need to get to. Yeah. So yeah. I'm coping because she has already given me the foundation mm -hmm. and I call on her spiritually, mm -hmm. energy wise. And I get through, you know, I'm like, I always wonder what would it be like if she was here mm -hmm. during this time, would it be here or would she be away with daddy and the two of them alone locked up? Yeah. I don't know, but it's nice to know that he's still here and mm -hmm. her memory's still here. Mm -hmm. So I'm holding on to that and I'm embracing every moment. I'm drawing out the camera now. And you got my, let me tell you, this camera right here, let me show you. Mm, I have been capturing some moments. With oh, lovely. Baby. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. Is that Seth? Yeah, Seth. You want to come and say hi? Come say hi to Auntie. Yeah. I'm just, just wondering why, why you're not watching TV right now. <laughs> she tried to put the TV as a distraction. Yeah, like, 
Hi, Seth. What's going on? What's Hi, Seth. Go play video games. Go. Go right <laughs> ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. Yeah, yes, I'm good. Easy. We're good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ready? So this is my baby. Uh, Step is going back to it. Nice. Wait, you taking a picture of me, girl? I got it. I got it. Girl, match I work the you, camera. You need to like give me a warning. Well, um, you know what? Having a, a a media house and not forgetting how to use my camera because I have so many other people. Don't doing embarrass it. yourself. <laughs> I don't want to. Lord of mercy, look on my screen, Dotty. How you take off the slash? <laughs> but but okay, so your your dad is with you. How are you now balancing the act of being caregiver too? I mean, I was a caregiver. I'm apart from being mom and so forth, and I know that can be stressful. I mean, how how are you managing? Um, my dad has always been my king growing up. I remember when I was younger, I wrote a song. Uh, You're the only man that I adore. Mm -hmm. You mean the world to me and much more. I can't remember the song, but I remember writing this song to my dad. Like, you know, my dad was a disciplinarian. My dad was my, my king. He did everything for me. And I love my dad so much. And, you know, with everything in less than a year, Oh my God! It's April. My mom passed in April. What was it? Was it? It was in April. Yeah, Time has gone by oh so goodness. quickly. Oh my God! I soon tell you the date. All right. It was. I can't, oh my gosh! I can't even. Oh, it's just yeah. Nearly a year. Anyway, so dad, you know, a big move having him come to Jamaica and you know as a Jamaican who hasn't lived here for so many years mm -hmm. trying to readjust now to the culture and the system has been tough for him mm -hmm. and I have had to you know rein everything and say let me manage it because you know no streets I'm of it lock up you can deal with it where he may want to be independent and deal with it but you know I'll mm -hmm. get it done quicker faster yeah whether it's links or understanding the system and knowing how to get to it. I'm not saying I break any legal codes with links, but you know how to get things done quicker. Yeah. So that has been a frustration where it's like, I feel that sometimes you may feel I'm stripping him of his independence to get things done. I'm being a little bossy, like mm -hmm. I'm a mom, mm -hmm. his mother or something. Dad, dad, you know, you, you're over 70. Where are you going? You know, don't you know we're on lockdown? Man, I'm going in car and go and walk. <laughs> and I feel I have been a little bit, I, I've been a little bit uh, mothering. And mm -hmm. I want to step back from that and kind of be like, okay, dad, you know, let me listen to you now. Now that we've gotten certain things set up because you have to come back and he has to sort out his health fund. And I really mm -hmm. want to talk about um, how to... And I want to call it care for how to live with your parent, how to provide for your parent, however that is, whatever that means, whether it's providing the transport systems in place that your parent is independent, mm -hmm. but it's healthcare, healthcare when people are older. As soon as my dad came back, the best thing I did was to get the NHL for him, his NHS card. Yeah. Cause being diabetic, prostate cancer, Mm -hmm. And all the other issues, mm -hmm. we yeah. had to get medication constantly. Yeah. And if I didn't have the NHS card, we would have dead. Yeah, like the the meds are insane. You got to ask your sister to help you. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. You have to get your NHS card for your parents. Mm -hmm. There's a healthcare plan with the CR. Caribbean, uh, Caribbean Community of Retired Persons, CCRP. CCRP, yeah. Big sign up in origin for that. Let me tell you. Yeah. Sign up, sign up for that and mm -hmm. get the surgical healthcare plan. Unfortunately, I think that the pre, what do you call it, pre-testing area, era, pre-testing yeah. is over where you would get your healthcare card without any pre-medical tests. Okay. Okay. Where when it kicked in, it didn't matter what you have. You are yeah. now able to receive the benefits. Yeah. However, now 
you can still sign up. There's a six month, I think, wait, but you can still get the benefits. Because let me tell you, healthcare for your parent who is elderly will kill you. Yeah, it's it's it will turn you into bankruptcy if mm -hmm. you're not careful. Yeah, and this is something we have to think about. What is our plan as parents? This is a good COVID nineteen moment. How do we prepare? for the future, yeah. what do we put in place? What do we read upon for financial security and planning so when we're old, we yeah. are okay. Our children would never feel burdened. And I thank my mom that she had her health care that we could send her off with a great fanfare. Yeah. You know? Not yeah. overdid it, you know, we do it because we were, we were very aware that right. a big funeral and fanfare, we spend all the money and everybody goes back broke. It's stupid. Mm -hmm. People spend millions of dollars on a send off. I don't believe in it. I yeah. don't want it. If you're going to spend 10 million on my send off, make sure you have 500 million to live. If you're, <laughs> only, if you're not have it, then you better send me in a bamboo coffin, in a bamboo outfit, and cremate me and keep me in a house. And everybody bring them on food, come on my send off. Mm -hmm. Because our children should never. Yeah. You must have a life insurance plan. And my mother had one. And I mm -hmm. encourage all of us. I was so grateful my parents had planned that as well. So it was it was one less thing to worry about when you're going through all of that. But super parents, cheers to that. Where's your glass? Yeah. Where's your glass? And then come. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. Here we go life insurance yes <laughs> and planning and planning and planning and super parents yeah yes. my parents have been amazing cheers to joy big, big up to joy Ooh, my yeah. mama. boy if you met her let me tell you she's she was joy she had an answer to everything she was soothing her uh -huh. voice was melodic she was just like she was like a little bird you know i would yeah. always get when people would ask me like you know um, occasionally, and this hasn't happened in a long time, but people would say, you know, how's your mom? And initially it would jar me, you know? And then they'd, I would tell them, you know, she's passed. And the response would be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But I actually appreciate it now. I like it. I yeah. like when people have conversations with me about my parents because I get to relive moments. Yes. I get to share yes. them and I get to share them with other people who oh. didn't, maybe didn't even know them, you know? So it's beautiful that we're, we're having this conversation during this time and, and so I guess, you know, also celebrating them as well, you know? I call yeah. it beauty in the brokenness. Um, That's many, lovely. I yeah. love that. It's beauty in the brokenness. I mean, there's so many things so many things where <laughs> when they pass and you reflect mm -hmm. you see so much more that you wouldn't do if mm -hmm. they were alive and it's what I'm trying to do now with my dad yeah to sit and watch and listen more and not be so frustrated because I think I've been a terrible daughter the past few months because I've been stressed and I feel I've been taking it out on my family um, mm. Yeah, my responses, my frustration, I'm snapping, I don't have patience, I don't have time, but I'm like, no, what's really important? Yeah. It's important for me to stop and acknowledge all of the important people in my life. And you see, this time is a time like this, this whole Zoom uh, platform and others, we never used it like this before. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Now I ask, what do we do with it to connect with the people we've never connected with like before? Exactly. We've been so busy. We didn't have time for the uncle and the cousin, them and the thing. And there's so much beauty in therapy in connecting with them. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a cousin who's dealing with heart issues and it was amazing to Zoom with her. It's not Zoom, actually. We did a WhatsApp call. But she was with her mom, my aunt, and her daughter, who just had a baby. And we had a moment to bond. And we haven't had that moment. We're so busy. So the you chaos. What you're saying right now, that, that term, there's beauty in the brokenness. Like, there's so much beauty in what is happening right now. 
I mean, how are how are you communicating this with your with Kush and Zippy? Are are you talking about what's happening globally? What kind of conversations, especially with a two year old? I'm I'm curious, like, what are those conversations like? She's something else. I have a video I did the other day. We went down to Grandpa's apartment, and Grandpa was sitting there and. I don't know what he said. Something like, come kiss me or give me a hug. She said, no, Corona, no, Corona. <laughs> I have it on my phone. It is so funny. Yeah. And he's just dead in with laugh. He's like, this girl, it's right here on my phone. I try to pull it up. She, she's just, so what we're saying is, um, there is social distancing. And, and we understand it because, you know, people drop off things or, you know, mommy may go for a drive to quickly grab something or get some guests in the car. And they understand it. My son is making his homemade mask. They understand the hand washing. We talk about it. We talk about distancing. Mm -hmm. They understand it. They know that there's a virus and a disease and somebody coughs on you or, you know, you touch something, you could get it. And they're just worried. I think my, more my eight-year-old is kind of like, you know, you could die from this. And I'm like, well, yeah, people could die, but many people will live. Mm -hmm. Don't be too scared, but be cautious. For mm -hmm. my daughter, social distancing is like a, a thing for her character. <laughs> we'll touch it. Like, so it becomes a part of her new way of life. Mm -hmm. as a two-year-old mm -hmm. yeah so she understand the uh, she the, the 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 what do you call it no she may not the, the the seriousness of it yeah but she understands that i'm not allowed to touch you because of coronavirus mm -hmm. how we played it into our our home activities mm -hmm. um in joke, but she will still give grandpa a hug and a kiss yeah yeah you know but she understands when people come no touching coronavirus, you know, mm -hmm. stay far. So it's the best I can do is to show them how not to get too close to anybody new. Yeah. And not to drink from anybody, to wash your hands 24-7. Mm -hmm. So that's the best I can do with that. I'm actually trying to find a video. It was hilarious. I Her think I think one thing with this is that it's helping. Um, and this is something, it's a pet peeve of mine where adults sometimes do not respect the personal space of kids mm. so they will come and you know come give me a hug come give me a kiss and i don't like that like no. i tell my son you tell them no like yeah. I'm, you tell them i don't you it's not like it. rude in my opinion you have to respect the child's space so this, right. this definitely helps to enforce that as well exactly yeah i agree and and that's something after this it's going to be a whole new world. Oh, yeah. Because my son has friends who, from early, he, he knew you don't share drinks. Mm -hmm. You don't pick up another bridge and drink and drink it at your school. Like, he's yeah. been raised like that. Mm -hmm. And he has a way, you know. Like, Yo, you touch my arm. I'm not drinking that. So, Simone um, says that my son said the other day, He's tired of hearing about COVID-19. He purposefully loses his himself on his iPad and books. We talk about we talk about this at times, but for the most part, he's over this mess and he's nine. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can definitely empathize with you. It's annoying. But I do too. I want to talk with you a little bit about you being a youth advocate. And um, mm. not many people would know that you, you had mentioned at the start that you're the chair of Maxfield Park Children's Home. Um, I have another friend of mine, Angel Beswick, who is also- Oh, that's your board. friend. Of course, I went to school with Angel. Yes, <laughs> I call her Dir Director Beswick. Oh, she, she's amazing. But so I, I have been aware that you guys have gotten a little bit of assistance and so forth. But how, how is the home managing at this point in time? We're doing good. Um, okay, Kush is here and I'm, I'm distracted, Kush. Once you come in the room, I'm distracted. I can't. Did you bathe? I'm going to. I can't focus when you're in my room. Shut the door. Go be an Amber Shafi boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't focus. I can't. That's a problem I have. Okay. 
like which is like I, <laughs> Cool, shut the door. <laughs> I thought I had a clear path tonight. No, that way is this. this. What? Unless you're locked in the bathroom. And well, okay. yeah. And you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Next time we do this in the bathroom. I'm going to. In the tub. That's that's the idea. I think I think that's gonna be a thing. We're gonna do this next time. After dark tub mom mom tub talks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But tell, um, Max, tell me, Maxfield. So Maxfield Park, I said to one of my directors the other day, and thank you to the director um Bezok Reed, who has been so passionate as a director in helping to drive the support from all of the entities that have supported, supported us during this time. She has been on the front line, you know, galvanizing the people, organizing it in every way that we are able to say, we can keep three to four weeks of supplies for over 100 children, over 35 staff on lockdown. Mm -hmm. I can tell you all our directors have been working hard doing many things, trying to secure the, the property, trying to make sure our children have healthy donations, a store donations such as cans of this and that, and you know, staple foods, everything is happening. And we are okay. That's we good. are okay. That's lovely. We're waiting on some more games to come through for the children to keep them occupied. You know, they have given us a list of what they would like to keep them happy and entertained during this COVID-19 lockdown. But, you know, it was tough the first week trying to navigate. You know, the Prime Minister was speaking about three people in the space. First it was 10. Then it was, you know, I think we're like, I think it went down to three. Mm. Did, did he say that, you know, well, either way, mm. um, any gathering less than 10 yeah. is preferred. And so we have a gathering of over 135. Mm. And we have to manage that because we have children who are wards of the state. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere to send them. Just like mm -hmm. you see the challenges in different areas where people, majority of people live, social distancing is hard. But we've been able to speak to them about it. We've been able to control how many people come in and out. Mm -hmm. We're still managing it. But it's, it's been a challenge. There are a lot of Zoom meetings. Yeah. I wake up, I Zoom, I go to bed, I Zoom. Yeah. That's where we are. Just trying to make sure everything is okay. So we don't stop working. We don't stop advocating. We don't stop asking. We don't stop managing. We don't stop providing oversight mm -hmm. for our children and us. 24 7 what how if anybody wishes to help um maxfield at this point in time what what how can they reach out to you how can they I think the, mm -hmm. the best thing is probably to send me a direct email e-m-p-r-e-s-s-t-v at gmail.com mm -hmm. go on to our social media handles if you send a message to like instagram i know that Director Angel Bensley Reed will see it and forward it to me or respond and take mm -hmm. take it on and, and take it through to the end. Yeah. And so we are on Instagram, Maxfield Park uh, I think. underscore official. Yeah, yeah. 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 Same on same on Twitter. I would I would prefer you go that route or or email me directly. Okay. You know? I'll it's definitely right share it in the comments. I'll yeah. definitely share it in the comments. I'm, we're getting a couple comments. Oh, about the tub talks. They were saying y'all acting as if they won't find us in there. Y'all need <laughs> to learn to lock the door. <laughs> well, you know what? But lock the door. I can't Arcade yourself find a key for this door. I can't find a key for this door. Then buy a deadbolt. Empress, get a deadbolt. Scraton, you know lock what? the door. I really listen <laughs> seriously. But you hear what I can manage when them stop, bang no, mommy, mommy. <sighs> I just can't manage. It's it's rough. It is rough. Um. Oh, there's a question here. Is the government allowing more foster care, private foster care, or making it easier for families to foster kids who are wards of the states? 
to reduce crowding in the home? This is actually a really good question. Very good question. The CPFSA, Child Protection Family Services Agency, which is a, an agency of the government, yes, the government is looking to get more kids back home. And yes, to boost the foster care program. Mm -hmm. so they're working on that, which is also about sending children back home and providing home support. Mm -hmm. Okay. So children who are in state care maybe can go back home, but how do we support the home to give the parents more tools to yeah. provide the better care? So there are two things that the, the government and the CPFSA is working on. Mm -hmm. That much. Yeah. I've had a conversations with the CEO of the CPFSA, Ms. Rosalie Gage Gray. Ga Rosalie Gage Gray, or I always say it wrong, Gray Gage, Gage Gray. And she's always being committed to trying to integrate the children back into their communities mm -hmm. and providing support. So that's a big, big, big idea, big plan. Yeah. And lots of support will be needed. Yeah, mm -hmm. services financially, spiritually, mentally, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. kind of social support. But there's and a people like Trishan who was on, uh, she, well, we did a, a, a live with Trishan and she did a nice deep relaxation practice. Oh. She's, she's done a little bit of work with Maxfield too, eh? We had her we did, as yeah. one of our amazing, <laughs> she was one of our amazing coaches uh -huh. where we had a session for mindfulness and relaxation and okay. finding yourself for our staff. Which is wonderful, yeah. Yes, and she was amazing. And for the first time, they got a chance to just breathe in breathe. and breathe out, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. so I, I was really thankful for that. You know, it's a, there is so much to do with the partners, partnership of so many talented people. As I mentioned, you know, with the CPFSA, Rosalie Gage Gray, people like Shoshana, people like you, people like me. We need to have a Zoom meeting on like, how do we get parents ready to take home their children? Mm -hmm. Stay care. And now is the time because it's a large population and we have prepared an isolation area in case mm -hmm. anybody was infected. Right. My God. You have to plan. Wow. Oh God, it's rough. Yeah. It's rough. Well, I'm just going to open the floor now to anybody who has a, any other questions for you. So Why I, is still here? So I, I have a little bit left. There's a little left. So, I mean, guys, what questions you have for, for Empress before we start wrapping up? Do you have any other questions? Um, MJ says that's great regarding, oh, I think she was speaking about, you know, what you've been doing with Maxfield. Um, so, you know, how the, the taking care of your home and family, work family. Okay, so Simone is saying, how do you monitor the caregivers at home? I asked because I used to visit one with our church and we had to talk to the caregivers because they were, tr they treated the residents harshly. So how do you ensure they really care? Yeah, that's a good question. It's a very good question. The reason I, I laugh is because one day I dealt with my own children a certain way and I said, if anybody else saw this as a fly on the wall, they would say, I'm just gone mad. Mm. Yeah. I don't, want to, I don't want to freeze. Can we all stop for a minute and think about a moment where we've dealt with our own picnic or we Mm -hmm. From the outside, we say something, and we want to take it back. I would drape them up away, and we want to take it back for the moment. Yeah. Our caregivers come from a very low, low income bracket. They are the people on the front line that have had to deal with children who have told them all kinds of things and have mm -hmm. abused them verbally. I, I make no excuse for any kind of abuse on any child. As a caregiver, as an adult, we have a responsibility to be the adult. But you see, until you live it, you don't know what they are going through. And the reason I say that is because I've heard the term is wards of state. I like to call them our children. 
I've heard them say some things to our children, to the to our staff, which you like, if anybody spoke to me like that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Our caregivers come from situations, they have their own families. And they leave and they come and they've taken this job, sometimes first because they care. Mm-hmm. The money can't barely provide. And they have to go in where they are seeing and hearing the worst of the worst. Ten, ten-year-old girl being raped. Mm-hmm. Getting a child from here. I've heard words threaten the life of my caregivers. Mm-hmm. I can tell you one thing. How do I monitor? I had a conversation today with my new manager who's been there for six months. Where I heard that some words fabricated a situation mm-hmm. alleged where they wanted to set up a staff because they're not like the staff to say the staff abuse them. All I said is have, an hear- have a hearing and find evidence mm-hmm. because I already called in and said no staff is allowed to put their hand on any ward, any child. Mm-hmm. There are the challenges, the verbal abuse, how do I monitor it? I ask for reports. I Got walk you. the ground and I ask the children to tell me, what are you experiencing? And when they tell me, I call the person to my, on my phone or to, to, to a meeting. I call the manager and say, the child said this, investigate. Mm-hmm. It is, let me tell you, it's very challenging. I can't imagine because I remember, children, mm-hmm. I remember when you came over one day and I think you had just gotten a new a baby in and that was that was rough like you were I haven't seen you like that apart from after your mom had actually passed away so the that, baby that was abused yeah so that mm-mm. like I can't even say it I can't even say it but um but we're we're actually coming up to the end um Facebook is gonna time us out But I have to thank you so much, Empress, for joining me tonight, for us to share a glass of wine and celebrate our moms and our our, our dads. And um, yes, I have to also big you up for what you're doing with Maxfield Park. I'm Um, trying. Let me tell you, I I know we're ending and and I want to respond to the comment, uh, the, uh, the question. I'm trying. I'm trying everything I can to provide yes, oversight. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I'm asking the questions. I'm doing everything in my power. And the day when I walk away from Maxfield is the day when anybody says to me, you're not doing mm-hmm. enough because I've sacrificed my life. Mm-hmm. And I can't do any more than working on under budget, working with lack of resources, mm-hmm. trying. And I'm not a quitter. But I'm going to do my best in my tenure to provide the best oversight, the best care for the children and the staff. Mm -hmm. Because we are all a community. And I want to say, we had this chat before all of this this COVID thing went down. And one of the things I wanted to do with Island Mom was to, because we have moms who want to volunteer, who want to come and hug the kids and spend time with them and offer a little bit of that maternal energy. So so we're gonna we're gonna be talking about this. Um MJ says that we're going to need a part two. So we're gonna be in the top. I love it. <laughs> in time. We're on lockdown. I got all the time in the world. Exactly. Maybe it needs to be like after nine o'clock when the CPU Yeah we we can we'll, we'll work it out because I have to get this one. <laughs> I know, right? I think mine is playing mine is mine is playing my mom's piano right now. Oh, that's lovely. He doesn't know how to play, but he's like, "Mommy, teach me." So I taught him. Mary had a little lamb. That's lovely. You know? And um, yeah, so it's amazing. That's lovely. Thank you again, Empress. Listen, you are so dynamic. You're an amazing <laughs> mom and entrepreneur, and I can't wait to do more with you, um, ah. for you, and 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 you know, for our children of Jamaica. I really appreciate your talent. And your passion mm-hmm. and your mom skills, girl. <laughs> to <pick> it bed. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Have a good night. And cheers yes. one more time. Thank you to everybody who joined us online. Thanks to all your online viewers. Thank you, Anika. Thank you. Take care. Bye, guys. Love you.
All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. And I think we are, yeah, we're, we're, we're done on the live call. Yes. Thank you so much. It was great. You're so fun. We'll have to catch up. We'll have to do mom talks. Girl, mom talks is next. Yep. I want to do it. I want to, guess what? We just do it as a sign into Zoom. Everybody sign in and listen in. Yeah, we'll do it. We're going to do it. We're yeah, going to do it. I really want to. Let's try chat yeah. next week after the Easter holiday. <laughs> Girl, Easter holiday done Monday, though. Yeah, yeah. We, we chat. We chat as soon as. Yeah. 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 All right. All right, darling. Go put your Thank you so today. much. This was so lovely. We finally got a drink together. <laughs> finally. <laughs> Even if I can't hug you up, but chill out. We did it. Thanks for yes. COVID. <laughs> oh my gosh. It only took a pandemic, but listen, this, this will be more frequent. I'm about to, listen, we need to. I'm going to go watch your um, Karen Carpenter interview tonight. Okay. Well, thank you. Yes. Later. Right. I saw the Trishana one, you know. Oh, Trishana. yeah, you saw that one. It was nice, Trishan. It was so nice. Sweet. It's so sweet. It was very relaxing. Um, it's there for replay. It was good. Yeah. I'm gonna share it, baby. I'm gonna share it. All right. All right let me go check on my crew. Love you, sis. Later. Love you too. I'll bye. Good night. All right. Bye.